Hey everyone, Joe here. In my full review of the book's Note Air 3C, I mentioned very briefly about the drawing capability. In this video, I want to talk more about drawing. So the other day I was having lunch and I decided to bring this tablet out so that I can draw with it and I'm quite pleased with the performance. But there are many limitations with the tablet, more specifically with the drawing apps. Since this tablet has Google Play Store, you can install whatever drawing apps you like. But for some reason, it says here that Infinity Painter will not work on this device. So if you want to install Infinity Painter, you may have to install the APK. The drawing apps I want to show you in this video are Clip Studio Paint, Concepts, Midibank Paint, and Sketchbook. So let's start with Clip Studio Paint. If you use the tablet in portrait orientation, the UI is not going to look great. It's going to look very squashed, very tight. So you can turn this to landscape orientation, but make sure you turn on or enable rotation. Okay, let me rotate this. Okay, so now I can have the palettes on the left and right side. Let me choose a brush. This is how Clip Studio Paint user interface looks on this e-ink canvas. Note that the display can only support 4096 colors and 16 levels of gray. The drawing apps I want to show you are Clip Studio Paint, Concepts, Medibank Paint, and Sketchbook. So let's start with Clip Studio Paint. Now, if you use the tablet in vertical orientation, the UI, the workspace is going to look very cramped, very squashed. So make sure you enable auto rotation so that you can use the tablet in landscape orientation. This is the color square. And as you can see, it's quite difficult to make out what color this is. And on the color ramp, the color transition is quite abrupt. I can see red, yellow, green, light blue, blue, pink, Let's look at the latency for Clip Studio Paint. So pressure sensitivity works and pressure works really well. It's just that the latency is quite bad. It's very visible. This app supports finger gestures. So because the latency is so bad, I don't really recommend drawing with this app. Next, let's look at concepts. So the latency is also quite bad. Pressure works and tilt works. So it's just that the latency is kind of bad, very visible. So the drawing experience is not going to be great. Next, let's try Medibank Paint. So the apps are able to launch quite quickly. Let's create a new canvas. Uh, let's create a custom canvas. So there should be some options here, but it's blank. This is how it looks on an LCD display. There should be options for width, height, DPI, paper size, and the background color. But here on the e-ink canvas, we only see this faded paper icon. Since you cannot create a custom canvas size, this app is unusable. However, I just want to show you the latency. All right, so notice the translucent user interface. That's because of the UI transparency. So let me increase this all the way to 100%. Let's choose the pen brush. So the scrolling animation is actually quite smooth for an e-ink canvas. Let's look at the latency. So latency is quite bad. Let me draw a bit slower. Even when I'm drawing slower, the latency is very visible. Pressure sensitivity works. Yeah, so the drawing experience with this app is not ideal. It supports finger gestures. Oops, doesn't work there. Okay, and it supports palm rejection. The color ramp does not look good at all. 
and the color wheel does not look good at all and lastly we have sketchbook all right so the app is able to launch quite quickly as well let's choose a different color okay it's very difficult to differentiate some of the colors if there are no names to the color swatches you can't even tell what some of the colors are let's look at the latency for sketchbook oh okay the latency is better compared to clip studio paint and midibank paint and also concepts there is still latency but it is noticeably better but there is still latency pressure works fine So the drawing performance really depends on the app you use and most drawing apps will have very noticeable latency if you really want to draw on this tablet you have to use the default note taking app which has the best latency performance so let's take a look at this sketch that i have here so this tablet is in landscape orientation right now and my drawing is actually in the wrong orientation I cannot turn or rotate this because this app the note taking app doesn't support rotation the note taking app also does not support zooming in and out if you want to zoom in and out you have to use the toolbar here by the side which obviously is very inconvenient so let me fix the orientation first I'm gonna hold this in portrait orientation okay so now this looks right it looks correct and i'm going to disable auto rotation okay so the other day i was actually drawing on this tablet with the orientation in portrait mode that's why all the text here and icons here are in portrait orientation but i was actually drawing in landscape mode so this means if you have a white scene you may have to turn the tablet this way so that you can draw the white scene and if you want to draw a vertical scene you have to turn the tablet the other way all the while while locking the rotation let me show you the tools that you can draw with you can add up to five brushes here at the top by tapping the plus icon which was there earlier so you can choose between brushes brush pen ballpoint pen pencil and marker and these are the available colors there are 20 if you cannot see what the color actually is you can rely on the label by the side here and here at the bottom you can adjust the line width this display is laminated so when you're drawing it looks like there is no gap between the line and the pen tip and as you can see the latency performance is pretty good this is very responsive and pressure still works and when drawing there is this very nice texture because the pen tip is textured and the drawing surface is also textured there is no cursor misalignment which means I can join separate lines like this without the lines overshooting or without leaving gaps palm rejection works great however depending on how you move your finger on the canvas it may actually flip to the next page for coloring you can use the thickest brush which is the marker and notice the latency performance is pretty good let me put another layer here so notice the color did not become darker now if i undo notice now you can see different layers so while i was coloring the marker did not update the layered colors it's only when i start to draw other things or do other actions that's when the layer the colors will update so depending on the tool you use you may not be able to see the actual effect 
until after the page updates. So for this sketch, I'm just using the black and white pen and for the shaded areas, I'm using the fill bucket tool, which works quite well as long as there are no open gaps. Another thing to note about this app is these are actually vector lines. So if I switch to the eraser to erase maybe a portion of this line, it will erase the whole line, the whole stroke. So you have to understand how vector works to get the most out of it. For example, I can draw a line here and maybe I want to draw a circle in front of the line. I can delete the line this way and draw the line again instead of erasing the line in the center. So the main limitation with this note taking app for drawing is the limited color support, limited drawing tools. You can use finger gestures to undo. There is no zooming in and out or rotation. Not having the double tap to undo is quite inconvenient actually. The anti-glare on this display is excellent. It's five out of five stars. So right now I have some reflections on the display and you can still see the e-ink show through. If you use this display under sunlight with sunlight on the display, the e-ink will still show through. And the visual quality is no different from reading newspaper, like actual newspaper, newsprint under the sun. It is that good. I was surprised it's that good. This is how the tablet looks outdoors on a bright day. I don't have any sunlight on the tablet because it's a cloudy day, but it's really bright out here. As you can see, the contrast looks really good. If there are multiple light sources, you will see localized areas of diffused reflections. Now, if you have an LCD display, so sometimes I actually bring my tablets out for sketching. When there are reflections on the display, this is what you get. And if the sun or the day is very bright, the reflections will be very bright. It's going to be white. And the display, together with the screen brightness, is going to be so bright that it can be quite glaring for my eyes, so it's quite uncomfortable for drawing. But of course, the advantage of LCD is you have colors with e-ink display. Right now, the color support isn't that great yet. The book's pen looks good and feels good. And this pen uses Wacom EMR technology that supports tilt, pressure sensitivity, and palm rejection. Now, if for some reason you don't like this pen, you can always switch to using some other pen that also uses Wacom EMR, such as the Samsung S Pen. This pen feels really good, so I don't think you will be switching. The last thing I want to talk about is battery life. So I've been using this tablet for almost two hours. That's 120 minutes, and the battery life dropped 13%. And all along, I've been using the front light at maybe 70%. So the battery life of this tablet is pretty good. So this is the review of the Books Note Air 3C from the artist's perspective. Hopefully the color technology can improve in the future so that we can get better and more vibrant looking colors. Thanks for watching. See you guys again. Bye.